There was a time when the Bitcoin price first crossed $10. $10, can you imagine that? And holders figured out, well, I better sell it now. It can't go up forever, can it? Well, it did, almost 10,000x since that day in 2012. And people are still wondering, will it ever stop going up? Well, let's look at some reasons why this idea that Bitcoin might just simply go up forever isn't actually as outrageous as you might think it sounds. And to start to understand, you have to understand first that Bitcoin's not going away. There are two parts of the statement that we have to untangle a bit first. First is the go up part. Second is the forever part. Now let's start with the forever part, because it's a pretty bold statement, right? Is Bitcoin here to say? I want to say yes, and here's why. Bitcoin is a major invention that merges the fields of cryptography, computer science, and monetary theory, as well as really meme culture, if you think about it. There's no way to uninvent Bitcoin. It's out of the box. There's no way to unsee what the world has seen. The white paper has been distributed across the internet. The software is run on thousands of nodes and many more miners active in every country on earth. It's the biggest, strongest computer network on the planet. Everyone has heard about it. It has great brand value, huge recognition, and huge power. Keep in mind, there can only be one original cryptocurrency. It is Highlander, and Bitcoin has won the game. True, there were attempts before Bitcoin, but BTC was the first to break through and be the winner. No coin will ever be able to copy Bitcoin's property of being the OG, of being first. But Lark, what about MySpace, the social media platform? (sighs) You know, yeah, sure, it was ousted a few years later by Facebook, right? Sure. Okay, I get it. I understand. But MySpace was a crappy product that had no mobile app and also hadn't penetrated through all the layers of society. It was a pretty niche idea. Facebook worked well, and it worked well on mobile, and then it spread further than MySpace ever had in a very short amount of time. It was the better product. So it was really in a different league. Another thing to consider is that in crypto, being the first comes with unique properties. Sure, the first ever brand of vacuum cleaner can indeed be outcompeted by later market entrants. But this isn't so easy in the case of inventions and technological innovation that have to do with network effects. More on that in a minute, but it's a very important point, so keep it in mind. Finally, Bitcoin was conceived as an experiment without an expectation of profit for the founder or the founders, unlike all the blockchains that have come after it. This so-called virgin birth or the immaculate conception of Bitcoin, although Satoshi does have a million coins, but you know, he hasn't spent them. So I guess it was that anyway, combined with its elusive founder, Satoshi being unknown are reasons that a group of fervent believers gathered around the orange, warm, embracing glow of Bitcoin. <laughs> but that's religious fervor, Lark. Yeah, it's kind of true. It's a bit, a bit like that sometimes. And guess which memes have stood the test of time for millennia? Religious texts. Don't throw anything at me. So while I don't know about forever, it is highly unlikely that Bitcoin is going away anytime soon. But will it keep going up? Now let's talk about the go up part. That's the exciting part, right? And pull out the Bitcoin power law model. It isn't new, but it has gained renewed attention over recent months. It has been holding up pretty well since the earliest BTC price data started flowing in. We all know that Bitcoin's price increase is not linear. Just to illustrate this, it took the orange coin roughly a year in 2011 to move from $1 to $5, extrapolating this trend of $4 per year in a linear way would bring us to a current price of around $50 for Bitcoin. Nah, clearly Bitcoin has advanced a lot faster than a linear model would indicate. Okay, so exponential then. What if we'd extrapolate the 5x in price in 2011, 12 times over 2012 to 2024? So five times, five times, five times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Putting this in an exponential calculator gives us a current Bitcoin price of $240 million per coin. Sounds good, but it doesn't meet reality, does it? It's just overshooting the mark by a little bit, right? Which, by the way, was the main criticism of the stock to flow model, a proper model for Bitcoin price predictions that assumes exponential growth. Now, here's a graph of the stock to flow model. The problem with exponential price growth 
is that the numbers get really, really wacky, really, really fast. We would be able uh, at a $15 million per Bitcoin five years from now, based on that, even people who believe in the stock to flow model assume that it will break at some point. It's been good so far, but some models can only go so far. The price can't go up forever exponentially, can it? So back to the power law model. If we look carefully at Bitcoin's price, we see the following. BTC's growth in price by an order of magnitude requires a similar but not identical change in orders of magnitude of time. More precisely, for the price to increase tenfold. The amount of time elapsed from the Genesis block must increase by about 50%. This means that in relative terms, 10x price increases happen at a constant rate. But in absolute terms, you'll have to wait longer and longer and longer for that 10x to happen. Now, what does the power law model actually predict? Well, the fair average value for BTC would reach $1 million around 2033. I'd buy that number. That sounds, that sounds realistic. Up, 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 right? And if your Bitcoin does go up forever, then you may want a tax efficient way to do that, by the way, and to keep more of your money for you, which is where today's sponsor, iTrust, can help you. They are a crypto IRA provider. You can roll over your existing retirement plan or start a new one with them. You can trade as much as you want and never one time cause a taxable event, which if you've been trading crypto, playing taxes, you know it's a real pain in the butt. They're the biggest crypto IRA service with the most users, the most volume, the most assets under management, the most coins. And they do have a huge range of coins that you can choose from, from all the top favorites like Bitcoin and Ethereum down to Dogecoin, Solana, and right on down the way, all kinds of stuff. They even offer real gold and silver via their partnership with Kitco, not the paper garbage, but actual real coins. I trust like crypto is 365 24-7, and you can use the link in the description to start your account and you'll even get a hundred dollar funding bonus. Thanks. And I trust for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about the number of users. So let's take a step back and ask, how do we even value this thing called Bitcoin? Well, it's a payments network primarily. I know there's other use cases popping up, but there are frameworks for valuing networks. For example, Metcalf's law. It states that a network's value is proportional to the square of the number of network participants. In other words, the value more than doubles when the number of participants double. Take an old fashioned telephone network. Imagine that you live in a village with 200 people. Well, it's nice if 100 people have a phone connection, isn't it? But if that amount doubles to 200, suddenly having a phone in that village becomes much more valuable, even essential, because everyone can now reach everyone. And if you're not in the network, you're excluded, right? In the case of Bitcoin, we count wallets, of course, instead of landline phone connections. Here's a glass node chart plotting the BTC price in black versus the number of addresses. Both lines go up in tandem. Zooming in, for example, February 2016, you would see 127 million addresses and a price of roughly $400. Currently, the Bitcoin network has 1.2 billion addresses. Now, not all those have balances, but addresses, okay? So the number of addresses has done a 10x and the price has done roughly 100x. Here we see Metcalf's law in action. Network growth leads to a value growth that's the square of that value. Now, what is reassuring about this chart is that the number of addresses just keeps climbing up without even looking back. And it's going to keep doing that forever as long as Bitcoin's around, which leads us to the adoption of technology more broadly. This chart here plots the adoption curves of a lot of different technologies, including households with televisions and the number of people with mobile phones, critical technological innovations. As you can see, even the technologies that had the fastest adoption, it took those 15 to 20 years to get to a 10% or more adoption rate. And that's where Bitcoin is right now, 15 years into its history. These are mostly lines of successful tech 
adoptions. Here's a similar chart, but with the curves aligned from the same starting point. Notice, by the way, there's also a gray line depicting the number of miles in a trolley per capita. It dropped off the cliff around 1950. Not every technology keeps getting adopted forever and ever and ever. There is technological disruption. And here's some perspective too. Gold, gold, our old shiny buddy gold. Okay, I know, I know. Kind of boomer money is a bit boring, but let's step away from BTC and look at the godfather of store value, gold. It recently reached new all-time highs. Yes, my gold bags, finally. So gold's apparently also going up forever, isn't it? In a sense, yes, because fiat currencies such as the dollar are constantly devalued, a.k.a. they go down forever. Gold goes up forever in price. But there's a caveat. When looking at the purchasing power, that's where things get a bit interesting. Gold has been actually been relatively constant, which is fascinating beyond belief. A century ago, the same amount of gold as today could buy you a home. Can you believe that? That's insane. In Roman times... An ounce of gold could buy you a fancy toga and a luxurious pair of sandals. These days, that amount of gold buys you a designer suit and a pair of nice shoes. That's wild, isn't it? It's kept its purchasing power all this time. If Bitcoin's adoption curve keeps looking very healthy, and if it cements itself as a store of value of the digital age, then it too will at some point stabilize in terms of purchasing power. And as long as fiat currencies will keep devaluing, which newsflash, they're going to keep doing that, then Bitcoin will indeed go up forever. It may sound like a bold claim, but I think there's a fair chance that it plays out kind of something like that. Thanks for watching.